Hey guys, it's Apod again. Today we're going to take our Raspberry Pi, a handful of parts, and we're going to code up something quickly with just three lines of code. To get started, I have two wires, a resistor, an LED light, a mini breadboard, and the Raspberry Pi itself. So the colors of these wires don't matter, so I can pick any one. And I'm going to start by plugging the red wire into the lower left pin of the Raspberry Pi. And that's assuming that the USB ports are oriented um, to my left here. So it's like the pin closest to me on the left. And then I will plug the other end into the breadboard. And I could choose anywhere that I want. I can just match it with the lower left here. And what that does is that carries the current to these other four holes in the same row, or the same column, depending on how you have it oriented. Um, so there are thin metal plates running underneath the breadboard here that essentially connect all of these little five dots, uh, five dot rows that you see. And the thing to note is that it will not carry across this middle part here, which is called the bridge. So the current will go up through here and stop. Um, so we need to carry on uh, that current and we'll hook up our resistor next and we'll use the resistor to carry it across the bridge. So now you can see that the current will run from the Pi through the wire across the, uh, the metal plates and the breadboard and then go up through the resistor onto the other side and hit these plates. So from there, we'll pick it up with the LED light. So <laughs> the resistor, you, it, you can't get uh, backwards, but the light you can. So the light is directional. So if you look, there's one end of the LED that's longer than the other. That longer end is meant for the positive uh, terminal. So we need to make sure that the positive, or the, uh, yeah, the longer end of the LED is going into uh, to pick up that current from the resistor. So we can just plug it in in the corner like this. And finally, we need to carry that current back to the Pi to complete our circuit. So I'll put this green wire just right next to the light. And then I'm going to hook it up to the pin in the Pi that's just above the red one. So in the upper left corner Again, assuming that the USB ports are oriented um, to my left. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so let's write some code to get our LED light to light up. I'm going to pull up a terminal and I'm going to put it where we can see it and the light at the same time. Um, since there are only three lines of code, I'm not going to save this script, so I'm just going to write Python 3 to get an inter interactive uh, Python 3 session. I'm going to write from GPIO0 import LED. And then I'm going to make an instance of that. So I'll just call it my LED. And it needs a parameter. And that magic number right now is 21. I'll explain more about that in a moment. And we are going to call the toggle method um, for the object we just created. And as soon as we hit enter, you see that light lights up. Let me turn off this light so you can see it better. You can see that LED lights up. If I call it again, it turns off. Call it again, turns on, right? So that toggle method will just toggle that light for us. So again, uh, very few lines of code to actually get started with something. So now I owe you an explanation for why 21 was the magic number in our code. So if you'll recall, the first pin that I hooked something up to was this lower left pin here with the red wire. And it ended with the wire with the pin just above it with the green wire. So the Raspberry Pi has 40 pins, which all look the same, but they are not the same. Uh, so to figure out their function, uh, we are going to run pinout in the terminal. Pinout is your friend. P-I-N-O-U-T. And that prints a diagram of the Raspberry Pi uh, at the top. And at the bottom, you'll see 
the pin configurations. So you'll have to kind of orient it uh, depending on how your Pi looks. So for me, it's facing, the USBs are facing the left, so it's, I kind of have to think of this as being flipped. Uh, but you'll notice that there's four types of pins that are highlighted. It's dedicated 5 volt, uh, always on, power supply pins. It's the same thing for 3.3 volts. And then you'll have ground pins, and the remaining pins are GPIO, which are general purpose input output pins. And these pins are numbered. So because we want to toggle our light, we are opening it up with a GPIO pin in the corner, which happens to be 21. And we are closing it out with a ground pin, which is the one just across from it. And so that, that completes our circuit, and that's why we chose 21. That is the pin that corresponds to this pin here that it's hooked up. I wanted to show you one more way of doing this too, which involves using the GPIO extension board. So this says that I'm going to take all 40 of these pins and run a wire for each of them over to this extension board. And then that is going to hook up into our breadboard. And so this time I have a bigger breadboard, not the mini breadboard. And so the advantage is that if you look closely, these are all labeled. So it's almost like having a pinout just printed, like physically in front of you, so you don't have to look anything up. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's completed. So this is what this strategy looks like. Uh, this is the same circuit. We can see that we can just read off the board that that pin here is 21 and that pin is the ground. So we don't need the pinout like we had before, but it is the same circuit. We're going from pin 21, using the resistor to go across the bridge, picking up the light, and then going back to the ground. And the same code as before will toggle the light on and off, but it's just a different way of sort of thinking about it. The idea of mapping all these wires over to this board and just working with things over here as opposed to trying to hook things up to the Pi directly. One key difference is the type of wires. So if you're taking this strategy, you'll need wires like this that have prongs on both ends because you're plugging things into the breadboard uh, on both ends. Whereas before, we had the wires where the uh, prong is only on one end. Um, and then this one can be hooked up to the, the pin on the Pi itself. So that's just one difference. But it's a perfectly viable approach. Um, it certainly is nice to have uh, <laughs> the pins printed directly for reference, um, although it is a lot more stuff on the desk for such a simple project like turning on a light. I know, it's not the most exciting Pi project. I get it. But don't underestimate the value of the exercise. We've gone from nothing to something, and it's a solid place to start. In my opinion, getting the light to turn on is the Hello World exercise for the Pi. If you get a kit for the Raspberry Pi like this one, you'll see that it comes with a ton of parts and can be intimidating if you've never done anything with the Pi before. Certainly, Pi projects can be complicated, but they don't always have to be and can still be fun either way. We'll soon move beyond our single LED and resistor and put many more of the modules you see here to work. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, thanks for watching.